coming up. There's one question we've received a lot lately. How did the coronavirus start? We'll take a look at the origin and tell you about a possible link between the virus and an animal you may not even know about. Plus, this boy is soaring to new heights with his very own business. I love doing things for other people because it makes my heart feel good inside. And puppy love. More and more puppies are wagging their tails across America. We'll tell you why. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I hope you guys are making the most of your summer. We've got a great lineup of stories to share with you, including lots of puppy love. So you definitely want to stick around for that. But our top story continues to be the coronavirus. As I always say, information is our best defense from the virus. And so here's what you need to know. Some states like California, where I am right now, along with Kentucky and Florida, continue to see an increase in cases. But it's important to note, this comes as a number of other states in the northeast part of the country, like New Jersey and New York, appear to have the virus under control for now. And whether to open classrooms this fall continues to be a subject many school districts across the country are deciding. We're going to have much more on this in the coming weeks. Now, over the past few months, there is one question we have received a lot from our viewers. Hi, my name is Karina. How did the coronavirus start? Hi, my name is Eleanor, and I live in Dubai in the UAE. My question is, how did the coronavirus start? Hello, my name is Sin Pei and I'm from Taiwan. And my question is this, where did the virus originally come from? Scientists believe the coronavirus likely started in animals before being passed on to humans. Our chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, is here to tell you more about the link between the virus, bats, and possibly another endangered animal you may not have heard of. Just a couple of months ago, when the coronavirus outbreak was beginning, I traveled to Singapore in Asia so to meet a scientist and named Danielle Anderson. So this is the bat colony. She studies bats. We put on protective clothing to go into the cages where they live. So there are a lot of precautions here to come yes. around these bats. Yes. So you have one here. Dr. Anderson told me the coronavirus probably first started in bats just like these. Why bats? So bats are interesting uh, because they contain a lot of viruses, they host a lot of viruses, but those viruses, uh, they, don't, they don't make the bats sick. So the bats are able to live happily with the viruses, but once the viruses shed out of the bats, they can make us sick. She says the coronavirus may have spread to humans when bats were sold for food at a market in China. And the market is a perfect mixing pot for all of these um, animals and people and viruses, everything interacting with each other. There are still a lot of questions about how exactly the virus made the jump from animals to humans. Scientists are studying whether the virus may have come from bats first, then infected other animals in the market before spreading to people. Some researchers think that missing link between bats and humans may have been a pangolin. Pangolins are mammals, and like an anteater or an armadillo, they can roll themselves up into a ball so their hard, scaly skin can protect them from predators. There are eight species of pangolin that live in Africa and Asia, and they are endangered, meaning they're not extinct, but vulnerable. Why? Because people have hunted them for food and medicine. This is um, all the pangolins I have. To find out more, I spoke to nine-year-old pangolin superfan Ryan Hill. What is it you like about pangolins? I just love how they're so innocent and how they curl up in a ball and they kind of look like prehistoric dinosaur. Ryan even went around on Halloween two years ago on a mission to raise money for their conservation. But not everyone knew what they were. Raising money for pangolins? For pangolins? No, pangolins. Pangolins? They're, they're, they're related to anteaters and armadillos. Oh! The new awareness of pangolins and the coronavirus has led to some good news. Last month, China announced new protections for pangolins to stop people from hunting and trading them. 
So what's the big lesson here, do you think? Is it to leave the pangolins and the other animals in their natural habitats and don't eat them? Yes, definitely. Like, leave the pangolins alone and stop eating pangolins and wildlife. Pangolins are not to blame. We are the ones who made the virus happen because we're eating them. All right, Richard, thank you. Now to a question I've been getting from some viewers who want to know why I'm not wearing a mask when I'm on TV. It's a good question. And the answer is because I'm alone. I've mentioned on this program that I'm working from home during the pandemic. And for me, that means operating from a mini studio that we built in a bedroom in my home. I've got a small workspace where I can do my research and write. And then on the other side of a divider, there's a remote control camera with teleprompter. As you can see, I have a small anchor desk with a microphone that I use to narrate some of our stories. Of course, there are TV lights and some communications equipment that allows our director and our producer as well to speak directly into my earpiece. And there's also a big cabinet with some blinking, flashing lights. I don't really understand what it does. I don't touch it, but I think that's what actually gets me on TV. But I am the only one in here when I'm on. My wife, by the way, shot these pictures. And that's why you don't see me wearing a mask when I'm on the air. Now, I do wear one when we have a visitor in our home. And of course, always when I'm away from home, like those walks with Lucy. All right, now let's switch gears and introduce you to a boy from Arizona who decided to launch his own business during the pandemic. And it's really taking off. Nicholas Bubeck is soaring to new heights. Blast off! The six-year-old turned his love for art into a business. He's not only selling craft planes, but donating some too. Then we take our bubble, then we take the glue, glue it right here just a little. Nicholas started a Kits for Kids program, sending free plane kits from his home in Arizona to any child whose family has been directly impacted by the coronavirus. I love doing things for other people because it makes my heart feel good inside. Dad, you put your popsicles stick on. Each package is filled with popsicle sticks, bottle caps, cork, and of course, lots of love. I want the kids who ordered a kit to feel happy and free just like me. When the kids open up their plane, I feel happy just like them. Though his mission is just taking flight, Nicholas has donated kits to a handful of families across the country and more on the way. All the you. When it comes to kindness, the sky's the limit for this kindergartner. We are rich. Well, joining us now is Nicholas Bubeck. Nicholas, great to see you. I see you got the memo to wear a striped blue shirt today. You look sharp, my friend. First of all, great thing you're doing, donating these uh, these kits to kids affected by COVID, the plane kits. But you're also doing good with the planes you're selling. Can you tell me about that? One dollar of every sale goes to the Triple Heart Foundation. The Triple Heart Foundation gives free books to the NICU all around the country. I was in the NICU too, and they helped me a lot. Well, there's a term for that. It's called paying it forward. That's wonderful. Tell me what has been your favorite part of starting a business during quarantine. Mine was selling my planes and kits during it. It was really fun. It made me so happy. It's my favorite thing doing about my business. Well, Nicholas, you are terrific. Thanks for what you're doing. I know a lot of a lot of people appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, if you're like me, you love spending time with your pet. When I play with my dog, Lucy, she always makes me feel good. And since the pandemic hit, more and more families across the country have been adding a four-legged pal to their homes. Here's Kevin Tibbles. There's a lot of puppy love going around these days. Pandemic puppy love. As kids across the country adopt new playmates to ride out these long days of COVID quarantine. That's what seven-year-old Cameron did in Seattle. <laughs> Nola, come. His family adopted a key son they've named Nola. And boy, do they get along. Just how fuzzy they are and how 
backpedaling and how it takes your mind to kind of off the pandemic so you're not really focusing on it. It keeps you busy. Half a country away in Illinois, five-year-old Brady and his family have welcomed home an adorable pup named Bishop. He's a husky mix, and he's been cheering everyone up for weeks. Hi, I'm Sarah from Paws, Chicago, and joining me here is Zared. And it's also in Illinois where the organization called Paws Chicago <laughs> helps so many homeless pets find new homes and families. In fact, since the pandemic arrived, it's been busier than ever. Are you noticing at Paws that more and more people because of the pandemic are looking to adopt pets? Absolutely. It has been overwhelming and just so incredible. The community has really stepped up to help us continue to save homeless pets. Since March, Paws has had over 15,000 adoption requests and has found new homes for some 500 puppies. They help us cope during stressful times such as this. Studies show they help uh, with anxiety. Um, they can help us when we're sad. They can help us just provide a light during such uncertain times. They really um, help cope. Putting smiles on a lot of faces. Yes, it is really yeah. welcome. Well, we decided to get a pandemic puppy because we had never had a puppy before and we thought this would just be a great time because we're usually so busy. In California, Braden and his sister Kennedy now share all their love with their puppy named Willy Wonka, an Irish terrier with red hair just like them. He's really fun to play with and he just makes like the best snuggle times and he always tries like his best to be good. Just remember if you do get a puppy, it's your responsibility to take care of them all the time. Because the more you love them, the more they'll love you. Right, Lester? Oh, okay, kisses. <laughs> All right, Kevin, we can't top puppies, so I think it's time for us to say goodbye. That's going to do it for us. And parents, just a reminder to you, if your child has a question, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. And as always, take care of yourself and each other.